training at the moment. She is 11 weeks old. I've been traveling quite a lot since our last video, so we've only had about five days together to do some exploring and some training. Um, but I'm just ecstatic when I get to work with her. Not because she's perfect in any way, but just because I love puppy training and I'm learning so much from her and having to think about what I want to teach her, which steps to take, um, what I should work on right now, what to prioritize. And then she just surprises me all the time with <laughs> bites to the face. So since we weren't having success with the target training in the last video, I decided to try something else. My feeling was that the target that we used wasn't salient enough for her, so she didn't really understand what she was getting clicked for. She was really good at getting on the pillow, so obviously she understands the concept of getting on something. So I decided to start some rear end awareness work with a perch that she can put her front feet on. And that proved to be much more salient to her. She quickly understood to put her front feet on a plate that I use. And we could then progress to moving her rear end around it. I try to keep a balance right from the start where I do as much on my right side as my left side so that they are uh, balanced in their bodies and also able to get in position at my right side or my left side for start lines in agility or any heel work training that we want to do. Um, she is better uh, going counterclockwise to my left side, which is so typical. Even though we try to be open about both sides, I think as dog trainers and as an old obedience trainer, um, I have a preference for my left side and it's just really, really easy to get imbalances there. So I need to put some more work into getting to my right side. It's just that the left side has been going so well that I tend to do a little bit more of that because it's so cool to see her coming into position at my left side. When I start this training, I start facing the dog, feeding for both front feet on the platform, and then moving myself around the perch. As soon as she moves a hind leg in the direction that I want her to go, I'll click and reward that. And I'll just keep clicking for every little step to the right side. Um, once I have some flow going that direction, I will start putting the sides of my feet close to the perch. And this is where I start shaping her to go into my position at my side. Um, it took some time for her to want to be that close to me. I really like this exercise, not just because of the body awareness, but also because um, it teaches her to like being close to me. So what I did was I would reward her for moving and then actually put myself in the perfect position and just feed her there. As long as she stayed nice and close to my leg, I'd feed her, then get back in front, move a little bit more, click for motion, and then get into position and feeding her some more there. And that really helped her put the whole thing together and start moving to get into position at my side. So that's where we're at right now. Um, in a good session, she'll follow my side be in a good heel work position and stop quite nicely once she gets into that position. A common problem when working with this rear end awareness exercise is that the dog starts to love it and they just want to go around and around and they don't really stop when they get to our side um, unless they bump into us. So I've tried to not reward her for bumping into me. I want her to stop once she gets to that position and just wait until I move again. So this is something 
if you want to do obedience that I think is really important, that you're not overdoing the rear end awareness, rewarding them for bumping into you or coming in behind your legs. I try to feed a lot in position as soon as they start to get the idea of moving their hind end. Because once they know that, it's all about teaching them position. For them to be happy to stay in heel position if you're not moving and then move with you when you're moving. I also use this for um, fitness work um, where I just want her to follow front to front. So if my toes point to the perch, she stays facing me and I move as much as I want her to move in either direction. If I want to work on heel position, I'll have the sides of my feet to the perch so that she has a chance of getting into the perfect position without being in front of me. So she's been doing good with this. She got caught it on really quickly. And I think from here we might be able to do some targeting maybe next week. We've also kept working on our backing up a little bit, mostly because the rear end awareness work on the perch encourages her to go sideways and I wanted to keep that straight back up. So to increase difficulty and also to make it a little bit more um, clear to her, I decided to teach her to back up onto something. I decided to use something that was not too high and fairly wide, so it was easy for her to put her back feet on it. I used um, pieces of the edge of my training carpet that are the same material. And we started with some backing up and then I placed the object behind her and clicked any motion towards it and jackpotted once she got feet on or over it. It's still not perfect, but she sometimes does it really nicely. You can see that she is thinking about her perch work, wanting to go to the sides. So I tried to just get lots of reinforcement in for just standing straight in front of me and moving straight away from me. And if she gets her feet on the object, I'll jackpot that and reward her maybe a few extra times for just standing there. So backing up two things is something that I will use for fitness work, but also for two on two off behavior for my seesaw in agility. So um, I think she's doing good with this, but we need more work. And I also think that I can use this once she gets the idea to get longer backups. Right now she's just doing a few steps and then coming back to me, but using this object as a target will allow me to get more distance if I move away from it and she will keep going until she hits that target. It makes it nice and clear for both her and me. Um, she is crazy about play, so that's why I originally thought I won't do much of that, I'll just wait for her to get older but she really wanted to play and she would bite my arms and she would not let go and she would bite my fingers. Um, so I just decided that if she likes to play, we'll play a lot, but I will just teach her how to play in a way that is not frustrating for either of us. My older dogs are terrible at letting go of toys and coming back with toys. It's not a big problem, but it's a constant annoyance when they won't let go or I'll have to chase them a little bit to get the toy back. It's a fun game, but it's also frustrating to me. So I really want her to have a good toy play with me where I can ask her to let go of the toy and she happily does that without frustration. And I would love for her to just bounce back with toys and just push them on me for me to play with her. And I think that we're doing really, really well with this. Um, it's just a learning opportunity for me and for her at the same time. Um, I started with teaching her to let go of the toy if I hold it very still close to her mouth. And she usually does that quite nicely. And as soon as she's let go, I've told her, yeah, which means grab the toy from my hand and we've just played again. 
I tried to add my out cue, which is tak, but it seems like anytime I'm, I feel like she will definitely let go now and I will give the cue, the cue in itself gets her bitey and she wants to regrip or just bite something um, else. So I might need to wait a little bit with teaching that cue or I could just work on it in another environment. Maybe just condition her that tak means get a treat from the floor or um, teach her to pick up something that is not so fun and then just have her let go of that on tak to get a treat just to give her another feeling when she hears that word because right now she thinks bitey feel things when she hears tuck. So I should think about that, not using that cue when I know that she'll fail. She is good at letting go and I've started to add some waiting before she can regrip because she was so quick letting go and then just biting again. But she's starting to understand that if she waits, she'll get the cue to bite it. Um, one thing that was really cool about this is that this type of training is fun for her but also seems to make her want to come back with the toy to me. So we started some um, sense to the toy where I just throw it out, um, restrain her, which was really hard to begin. She was fighting me but once we started working on some self-control around toys, she's now really nice just looking at the toy and I can tell her go and she'll go to the toy and pick it up and what really surprised me is that she started to come back and retrieve it to me which I'm just so excited about she would not um, retrieve at all a few weeks ago but she she doesn't do it every time but often she'll just fly right back to me and we can play again so I really feel that we're starting to get to a point where she is not frustrated about playing with me and we are starting to find ways where we both are having fun which is so cool we've also worked a bit on sits to get the game started again so when I take the toy away she'll sit and wait for me to release to the toy which is great because this is what I want her to do in agility when she's really excited and wants to start some fun game is for her to sit and be really still and just wait for me to give her a cue so I'm happy about that um, I want to work more on sense to the toy and I would also like to not have to grab her to start the game but teach her to jump into my lap and then be released to the toy. So that's something that I might work a little bit on this coming week. Spam doesn't know many words yet. She might know her name. I should work more on that do some recalls and really make sure that she knows what her name is. I think she's starting to understand it, but I haven't worked much on it. She does understand her release word, which is fri. She seems to understand ja, which means take the toy. And she's starting to understand go, um, which is just go to the toy in front of you. But I really like to start early with teaching cues because I think it's a difficult concept to dogs. They are not verbal animals. And I think it's good to start early with, te with teaching them that listening is important and different words have different meanings. And what I say is the most important thing on an agility course. So I want to start early, but I need to have things to name. So that's why I've started to reinforce sits. And that sent me down a rabbit hole of how do I want her to sit? What behavior is it really that I want to put a cue to? Um, in what situations do I want her to be able to sit? And so I didn't get started on naming it. The more you know, the more difficult things get. So. 
I usually start early with just naming a sit, even if it isn't perfect. Because I want to start early with cues and sit is usually the first behavior that I um, work on stimulus control on. Border Collies are usually very keen to lie down and that's why I use sit because it is a little bit more difficult to them and I don't want to work too many downs because that comes so easy for them. So sit is my default behavior and the behavior that I start to name. But I started thinking about too many things um, about her sit, so I haven't added a cue yet. I need to find a balance between all the perfectionism um, and just getting started with cues. So what I want from her sit is for her to keep her front feet still. So when I say sit, I want her to have her front feet still and tuck her rear end in under her. That's one thing, and she's doing that quite nicely. Her front feet are not still, but she's usually sitting forward. Another thing that's important to me is that she will sit wherever she is. I don't want her to think that sit is something that happens in front of my feet. And this is where we're not really where I would like to be at. Um, especially encouraging her to sit forward has also encouraged her to get close to me when we work sits. So I need to figure out a way to get her to understand that sit uh, can be done anywhere. It doesn't have to be on a long distance right now. I just don't want her to think that sit means walk to me and sit. It means sit wherever you are. So one thing that I did that was kind of a mistake was releasing her and then throwing a treat away. And then she would walk back in front of me and sit. Um, so if I wanted to add a cue to that behavior, I would probably add a cue to walk towards me and sit, which I don't want. So first thing I need to stop is stop throwing the treat away and have her walk back to me. It's better to release her and just reward in the position she's at and then just rewarding a quick sit again. It won't be a big problem, but um, it's been something that I've been thinking about and that's why I haven't started to add the sit cue yet but it's something that I really want to get started with very soon. In everyday life we still have her brother in the house so they hang out a lot which is good. Um, they play, they sleep together, they are pretty good at telling me when they need to go out and go to the bathroom. They're with me in this area anytime I'm at home. Um, at night or if I leave the house, they're in their box. Um, and that pen that I keep them in that has a toilet and some toys and sleeping place um, has been working really nicely until I left them this Friday to go judge. And I had someone come over and watch them for the weekend. And the minute they walked in the door, her brother Fish would just climb over the pen to greet them. And then he kept escaping all weekend. But we now have higher walls in their pen. Um, so they're actually staying there. And they're not there a lot. Just when um, I need to take the older dogs for a longer walk or go to the store or at night. Um, Rest of the time they're just hanging out here and they're just very nice about it. They sleep a lot. They just go to sleep whenever they're, they're um, sleepy. They are nice and polite to the older dogs. Even Daddy Epic likes them and thinks they're okay. They'll play with their mother. They still try to feed from her um, and she's quite nice about that. I wonder how long they will do that for. <laughs> I take them on our normal 25 minute walks and they're very happy to join us on that but I haven't brought them on the longer walks in the forest yet because I think they might get too tired if I bring them and I'm not in a condition to carry them. Um, we've had a few adventures. Um, we brought them to a sheepdog clinic yesterday. Um, they were excited about sheep. 
unfortunately, because I have sheep right outside the house. Um, they thought it was very wet and cold. It was like raining and three degrees Celsius and they weren't happy about that. Um, but they had a good time sniffing new things, looking at new things and greeting people. And they are very, very social with people, which I re really like. They can get a bit worried about other things like um, cars or things that make strange noises, but they are very, very happy to greet people. And that's just something that I think is so important. Spam's really good at sleeping. I'm waiting for her to wake up so that we can do some training. And the other dogs are you know, moving around. And she is a perfect little puppy. Sleeping.